Welcome back. It's another Boomer TV and I'm Paul Foti. I'm Julie Patterson. We're sure glad you're with us this morning. All right, we're going to go uh, to some place that's been around a long time. You know, I've been around a long time, but not as long as the Slippery Noodle. Well, I love the Slippery Noodle because it's very historic. A lot has happened there, uh, including lots of great music. We're going to take you inside. And we're going to meet a guy you may already know. Yeah. Rafael Sanchez, who is the Call 6 for Help reporter for years and years, but he's got another side. He does. He's got a lot of sides. Lots of uh, fun things to learn about Rafael on the show today. And we're also going to find a theater where you might not expect to find it at Fort Benjamin Harrison. Yeah, the theater at the fort. Not only do they do the theater, but the they have, uh, you know, poetry readings. You can go and see art. Uh, we're going to take you inside and, and find out what they've been up to. I need to see art. He owes me money. <laughs> We also will see Heather, who is going to do some, oh, look at that. She's got another great dish to prepare for us. And she doesn't owe you money. Uh, you, well, we've seen her with skewers and cranberry and eggs. Uh, wait till you see what she's got on today's show. And we're glad to see you. Sit back and enjoy today's Boomer TV. TV is made possible with support from Westport Homes, dedicated to building homes for every chapter of life, with plans and details that match customers' specific needs and style. Additional funding is provided by Altman, Poindexter, and Wyatt attorneys, serving clients throughout central Indiana with wills, trusts, and estates, with over 70 years of combined experience. Unique Home Solutions, serving more than 30,000 homeowners since 1983 providing home remodeling services from minor updates to complete renovations with a mission to improve appearance and efficiency. Hey, Paul, I know something that will make you feel so young. <laughs> okay, good. You ready? Lay it on me. We are going to take you to the oldest bar. Older than what? Yeah, and me too. The Slippery Noodle. You've heard of it, right? Yeah, uh, what a history. Oh my gosh, it's a historic place and you're going to find out all about it. I hope you've been. <laughs> The Slippery Noodle Inn was originally founded in 1850 as the Tremont House. It is listed in the National Register of Historic Places and is considered Indiana's oldest continually operated bar in its original building. So the building was established in 1850 and the reason that the noodle can claim that we're the oldest bar in Indiana is because ever since uh, liquor licensing was a thing, we've had a continually operated liquor license. It's never lapsed. And then uh, during the Prohibition era, they were still making whiskey in the basement. So it's always been churning out booze since 1850. The Noodle is the oldest commercial building left standing in Indianapolis, and the Tremont House sign painted on the north side of the building dates back to the 1850s. The ceiling in the front bar room is made of pressed tin. It was installed circa 1890. The Tiger Oak Bar and Back Bar are well over 100 years old and believed to be original. The trough at the edge of the bar, that was used as a cash register in the olden days. The honor system worked and so did a Colt 45. What we now know as the Noodle has had many identities over the years. The Yegi family bought the bar in late 1963, taking final possession on Friday, December 13th. The Slippery Noodle Inn was named by the current owner, Hal's dad, after a lengthy family debate. So we're in the original part of the Slippery Noodle Inn here, but Correct. it's since expanded, you have lots of different areas Correct. now. What else are we gonna find out here? Hal took over the bar in 1985 after his father's death, and since that time, it has grown from a one-room lunch counter into the Midwest Premier Blues Club. He took over in the 80s, and that was when the blues were taking over, like Roseanne started getting popularity, and the blues genre just was getting more and more popular. Um, and he tagged onto that and started hosting blues music on this stage. Um, but now we have two live stages um, that we host live music seven nights a week. In 1987, the Slippery Noodle moved to playing blues all the time. It didn't take long for blues musicians to hear about the new kid on the blues block. 
They knew they needed to expand, and the backstage was added the next year. This building is huge. It's It's got a lot of nooks and crannies. I say it's like an English muffin. Look it is very big. We sit on half a city yeah. block. Who are some of the celebrities that come hang out at the Slippery Noodle Inn? Probably my most memorable were Jimmy Fallon came through during Super Bowl. And then one night after hours, the Roots got up and played. So that was really cool. The, the Blues Brothers Band has played here before. And uh, Tim Robbins was here one time. He's one of my favorites. I can only imagine the electricity in this place with Dan Aykroyd on stage. There's some history in this room too, right? Somewhere I hear there's like bullets in a wall or something. So this room used to be horse stables. So when it was an inn, um, people would leave their horses in here overnight. The balcony was actually a hayloft. Um, and then this brick wall over here, there's still a shotgun blast out of the wall as well as a few bullets still embedded in the wall. Um, with the rumor being that the Dillinger gangs and the Brady gangs used to hang out back here and use it as target practice. Ooh, I wonder who they missed. That's what I always said, is it target practice? Was there someone standing there? I don't, I don't know. We're rumored to be haunted. If Hal were giving you this interview, he would say we are absolutely haunted. I've heard there's 13 different entities in the building. Um, back here, uh, they say Sarah is back here. There's George in the basement. There's a the shadow man, the boss man. Not all of the history in this building is so self-explanatory. Sometimes you have to get the full story. Like, what exactly is going on in the basement? So Sarah leads us to the creepiest spot in the bar. This is a documented way station on the Underground Railroad as well. We're right next to the train station, so slaves would hide out in this building to catch a train north. I don't know what it is about this room. I've been here for 14 years and not stepped foot in this room. I don't know what went on in here, but something sure did. Ooh. Being in business as long as it has, every corner, nook, and cranny has a story. The whiskey still, and then just again to represent that they were turning out booze down here during Prohibition, and it just looks really neat down here now. Wow. Need proof the Slippery Noodle is Indiana's oldest bar? Here it is. We've renovated this room to look like the period of the late 1800s. Everything has stayed true to the time, and it's all antique. Um, this chandelier was uh, gas converted to electric, mm -hmm. and the wallpaper, like you said, this felt Good. wallpaper is amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, and then just the little bed and the tall ceilings. And uh, again, this is just something people want to see on the tours. Yeah. So how long was this a brothel? Until 1953, there was a fight over one of the girls. Two guys got in a fight and one guy stabbed and killed another guy and left his knife in the bar. <laughs> There's still the little mark in the bar where you can see where that happened. And then the city shut down the brothel. So is Sarah hanging out with us now? I've never seen any of the ghosts. Because it just got really cold in here. <laughs> like I have a coat on and it just went. You're going to give me goosebumps. Dropped. But I've never seen any of the ghosts. I can't emotionally handle something like that. Mm. I, I can feel it. <laughs> Not going to lie. Might need to grab that sage that's right outside the door. We could burn the sage to clear mm. everything out. Or we could just go downstairs and have a beer and just kind of shake it all out. Like it never happened. That sounds good. All right. That's the plan. For Boomer TV, I'm Mel McMahon from the Slippery Noodle Inn. Well, let me tell you something about Mr. Rafael Sanchez. Everybody thinks they know Mr. Call 6 uh, for Help guy. He's been around uh, on uh, Channel 6 forever, but he used to be a producer. He was my first uh, producer when I worked. In he used to be in my earpiece all the time. If you don't time. know what a producer is, they sort of put together the news shows. Yeah. They put it all together. Well, who, he is multi-talented. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there are a lot of sides to Rafael Sanchez. Great guy, and you're going to get to meet him right now. Nine months pregnant, struck, dragged, left on the street, screaming in pain. Now, for the first time, she tells her miraculous story. What would you want to say to the man who hit you with his truck, drove away, and left you behind? Watch Monday on 6 News at 6. So we're here on the set of RTV6 with Rafael Sanchez. Thanks for inviting us. Thank you for coming to my home. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's been your home for a little while now. 21 years That's in not February. Possible. In February. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's great to be. Uh, it's great to be a part of this great team. So it's good to be here. So hey, but I know this is your show. Yeah. But officially, oh. we must do the opening selfie. So welcome to our TV. I like Sex. the lighting. Yeah. Thank you, Raphael. That's so cool. Uh, this uh, call six for help has really changed so many people's lives. I love it. I, you know, is that your passion as far as? I feel like I'm a social worker on TV. Oh, yes. I mean, that's what I do. It is. I mean, so we get all these stories that come in mm -hmm. and we have to sort of go through them all and mm -hmm. figure out what are the needs 
and what's happening. And in our case, we try to find systematic issues. So beyond just the pothole, what's leading to that problem with that pothole, right? Oh, mm -hmm. right. Why isn't the city doing that, or why isn't the state government fixing that? Is there is there something broken in the system? So our job is to figure that out. But I just love being able to help people. You know, you have helped a lot of people, and you mentioned a little bit about the process of how you select the stories that you do. Um, how, how do they trickle down? Because you must get so many requests. And team how do you figure it out? Well, Just the team gets together. We obviously the emails come in, mm -hmm. Facebook Messenger, oh. either tweeted at us, right, or mm -hmm. emails and phone calls. Uh, aisle six in the supermarket. Oh my gosh! <laughs> right, right, right. Anywhere, anywhere I go publicly, people have a question. Oh. Um, but that's awesome, though, because it's again, it's just good to know that people feel connected. And then the team, whether it's Kara or Paris, mm -hmm. or Mark or Amanda, they mm -hmm. we go through emails, we go through uh, and try to figure out which story can have the most impact. Right. I have a job to do. So right. if I need to chase you down, and if I need to crack down on something, if I have to hold you accountable, mm -hmm. uh, I don't hold back. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to make sure that you answer our questions. But that's the professional side, right? Right. And mm -hmm. then when it's time to do other stuff. I'm going to laugh with you. So hopefully you catch me on a day that I want to laugh with you as opposed to when I need to chase you down. Yes. I am much nicer <laughs> laughing with you as opposed then to, right? Yes, or, yes, running you down with a question. <laughs> That's funny. Get out of my way. You are pathetic. Then you will go, boom, nothing will please. save you. You're going to go down. The wrath of God is on its way. When, uh, when I go out to public events mm -hmm. and I break out my thing and I laugh and I move around. His MC, Raphael. And I put on my shiny jacket yeah. and, and the, the shining shoes. People go, oh. oh my gosh. And I break out the selfie stick and, hey, <laughs> let's take a selfie. People go, what is going on? It's funny. You see them going, uh, Wait, is that, uh, wha is what? that the news guy? Is that the TV yeah. guy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah because we're here to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want to have a good time, but I, I do about 50 community events throughout the year. Oh, my and goodness. So, but, 52 but weeks, that's every week. But that's my, here's my hobby. <gasps> I have these shiny jackets. I have this, a money suit, a pineapple suit, a flamingo suit. I have these shiny shoes. I mean, I will do whatever it takes to really help an organization raise money. Uh, uh huh. Right. So I will have so much fun with the groups uh -huh. that they'll go, what is going on? Yeah, that extra mile. But at mile. the end of the day, it's just to make sure that people are engaged, mm -hmm. they listen to the message, and that we raise money for good causes. And they so. remember that, I'm sure, the shiny stuff. Oh, Did I wrote, you see Rafael Sanchez? I rode a bike. Suit? What? I, I, rode a, 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 I brought my bicycle and I rode it to uh, the Indiana Black Expo yeah. corporate luncheon because I had to get the 2,000 people's attention. So oh. I rode my bike around and said, hey, everybody, it's time to raise money. But it gets the point across, uh -huh. which is, you know what? Let's have a good time. Mm -hmm. Let's have a good time. So my, so my hobby is to work with a lot of social service organizations and help them raise money. Yeah. yeah. So your passion is your hobby, too, kind of. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I have more hope now that somebody's going to speak for me. Come in here, it's kind of like Easter and find an Easter egg. There's just no substitute for an event like this that connects live people with agencies. Is the most rewarding part, is it, would it be like teamwork or helping people solve problems or raising money for the community? I love what I do and all the things that are attached to it. And I think I'm, I'm blessed, really, mm -hmm. as a person of faith, to be able to come into a, a place where I just love this place. Mm -hmm. And then all the things that come with it. And whether mm -hmm. it's helping people, whether it's uh, being connected with the community, um, meeting interesting people like yourself. Because every day, as you know, because you do this every day, mm -hmm. you and Paul, you just talk to a lot of great Hoosiers. Mm -hmm. And I think if people really took the time just to get out their door and just talk to someone across mm -hmm. the street or or down the way, they would find that they have so much in common with their fellow neighbor. And I think if we just took a little bit of time to do that, mm -hmm. that'd be great. I always tell people that I want to be Oprah. Remember yes. When Oprah, remember when Oprah said, you get a car, you, you get, get a car, car you, you get, get a, a car. car. But I realized that I'm never going to be right. a female African-American. <laughs> I came to, <laughs> right? Right? But here's what I realized, though. I don't think so without... Well, not um, in this lifetime. No, probably right? not. And not even with Botox <laughs> or surgery is that going to happen. But here's what I realized. A suit's not going to make that happen either, a funny suit. Um, <laughs> but I realized in that vein, yeah. uh, we can do something in our zip code. Mm -hmm. Just one little thing, yeah. right? So I tell people, just do one little mm -hmm. thing in your world. Mm -hmm. And I think that can have that, that difference. So this affords me that opportunity to be able to work with great people, uh, to do great things, and just have a good life. Rafael Sanchez. <laughs> I'm Julie Patterson for Boomer TV. Thanks for watching.
Paul, I love the theater. Do you love the theater? I love the theater, and I love Fort Bend. We both we both love running there. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of uh, cool, eclectic, historic things that are on that campus, and one oh, yeah. of them is the theater at Fort Harrison. I didn't realize this, so I'm interested in this story, too. All the different kinds of art that you can find there. Very eclectic. Uh, maybe it'll be a poet reading, a poetry reading. Maybe it'll be uh, an actual theater show. Maybe it'll be uh, some paintings or some art pieces you could go and look at. We're going to find out in this segment. <laughs> I just love this theater. It's so fun and intimate, yet spacious. First, let's start with a little bit of the history of how the, the fort became a theater. Okay, well, thank you. We find this theater just a gem as well. So this theater was actually built in 1929 to entertain the enlisted men at Fort Benjamin Harrison. Um, originally, it sat over 500. Um, and somewhere, we think, in the 1960s, um, it was remodeled for this Presidium-style uh, theater that you see today. Um, the fort, as you know, closed in 1996, uh, but the theater itself stopped um, production or public programming in 1985. So um, in 2015, when we reopened the theater, um, it had not been programmed for 30 years. So this sat empty for 30 years, and so really just in the last few years, you've brought this all back to life. Um, what, is, what is the mission right now then for the theater at the Fort? To use the theater as sort of our focal point for a cultural campus. Um, Arts for Lawrence has been envisioning this for 10 years. Um, it was our goal to get here at Fort Harrison. Uh, Fort Harrison is uh, situated in the center of the city of Lawrence. It bridges a lot of um, demographic gaps for the city. Uh, so we find that this is a really great location, not to mention that it has a beautiful historic theater that we can program. So the Arts for Lawrence has really been around for quite a while. It's just now you've, you have a home. We do. We, um, we have our new home as of 2015 here um, at Theater at the Fort. It is owned by the city of Lawrence. We have a very strong partnership with the city. Um, since we've moved here, um, we've done renovations um, of about $180,000 worth. Uh, we've got a brand new lobby, we've remodeled backstage, we've added all the stage lighting and sound equipment um, that's in here today. What do you see as the vision for Arts for Lawrence in terms of your cultural programming? So Arts for Lawrence has been dreaming of a cultural campus here in Lawrence um, for 10 years. Um, the first part is getting here to the theater, um, but because of a wonderful opportunity uh, by the Lilly Endowment, we sent a concept paper into the Strengthening Indianapolis through Arts and Cultural Innovation. We've got a design for the property here that the city owns, the theater at the fort, the community center next door, and all of the property north of here um, to build a cultural campus. It'll have an outdoor amphitheater, it'll offer public art, um, all of the functional pieces, the park benches, the uh, bicycle racks, the sidewalks will all incorporate artwork. Um, it's going to be a fabulous uh, destination here on the northeast side of Indianapolis. If I knew the last time that I held you was the last time I'd have held you and never let go. And you handle almost everything, whether it's here on the stage, all your other programs. Share with us how busy you are. Yeah, sure. Well, um, you know, Arts, Arts for Lawrence mission statement is to connect communities, to inspire art uh, for everyone every day. And that means that we try to have as wide a variety of programming as possible. So when you come in here on any given day, we could have uh, a performance of, of theater, a theater play. Um, you know, music, concerts, uh, we have swing dance, you know, we have poets, uh, open mics, uh, a whole variety of things for a whole variety of people. Share with us a little bit more like what happens here on this stage and are they kids, adults? Sure, or Do you yeah. have a lot of we, volunteers who help out? Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a huge network of volunteers, although we're always looking for more. <laughs> and um, yeah, we try to be all ages. Uh, we've had kids concerts in here we've had uh, a middle school orchestra in here which was great 
Um, and we've had our Lawrence players, our, our community theater troupe, which is uh, kind of a, an older crowd, an all ages type of crowd. So we have anybody from, you know, six years old to 60 year old plus. What brings you to this? What do you love about the arts and seeing the impact that it has on such a vast array of people in the community? Well, it's, it's a lot of fun to see. It's our arts, especially in a, as a diverse community as this, is a place where we can really get together and exchange ideas and have conversations in ways that we don't normally have on our day-to-day -day lives. And I, I think that the impact that you see on that with all the different types of people that we bring in here, you know, we service well over 7,000 people come in and out of this stage every year. And, you know, to see the impact that that has and to see people coming together and talking and having conversations that you might not usually have uh, just through art is a really fantastic thing to be a part of and it's really easy to come to work every day. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Anthony, and for the arts for Lauren so much, bringing the community together. I'm Cheryl Mathis for Boomer TV. I've got something that will make you perk up a little bit. Yes. A cooking segment oh, with Heather. Oh, that means we eat. Yeah, we do. She's done some great things in the past with cranberries, eggs, and skewers. Wonder what she'll have for us this morning. Let's see what Heather has on the menu. Well, today I'm making white chocolate mini cheesecakes. I love these cheesecakes because they are so cute. You bake them right here in individual mason jars. They look great on a table. They're great for a hostess gift. And of course, they're really easy to transport. So full disclosure, I am not a baker. So if I can bake these, anybody can do it. It's super simple. So you start with a little mason jar like this. Your base are chocolate graham crackers. You could use regu regular graham crackers as well. And this is just melted with a couple tablespoons of butter and a couple tablespoons of sugar. And I'm gonna go ahead and just gently pack that down. Your second layer is jam. I got raspberry jam, but you could use any kind of jam or jelly you want. You could do strawberry, grape, apple. I just like raspberry and white chocolate together. So just about a tablespoon of your jam. And then this is the real easy part. For your cream cheese filling, all you need are one and a half bricks of cream cheese, a half a cup of sugar, a half a cup of sour cream, which gives the um, cheesecake kind of that light, fluffy feel to it. Two eggs with a tablespoon of vanilla. And then the piece de resistance three ounces of white chocolate melted into a fourth a cup of heavy cream. And that is it. It is real, real simple. So then just get your beater and you wanna mix this for a few minutes. So you wanna whip this until it's nice and smooth. And you'll see the consistency start to whip up and take shape. Um, with the sour cream and the cream cheese, it starts to kind of form a peak, and you'll see what I mean. And I love this recipe because it's kind of um, a cross between a no-bake and a bake uh, cheesecake. So it's a little dense and fluffy. You'll just have to try it to believe me. Once you've got that whipped up, it's gonna get a little spatula, and you're gonna fill your mason jar, not all the way to the top. You wanna leave a little room for this to rise. So just about that. If you get stuff on the side, that's okay. Just wipe it off with a little towel. And then you're gonna put them in a roasting pan, just like this. So we fill the water halfway up in our roasting pan. And what this does is it helps all the cheesecake cook evenly. Now I have my oven preheating at 375. Obviously I've already gone ahead and pre-cooked all 11 of these. I just wanted to show you how to do this. You're gonna cook these for 25 minutes. What you wanna do is make sure you keep an eye on these. Um, you're looking for this sort of golden brown crust where they rise. They're a little waxy and sort of matted looking. Do not take them out. At this point, what you wanna do is shut your oven off. 
You're gonna open the door halfway and just let everything cool for the next half an hour. The problem is if you take them out too early, they're gonna collapse on you and you absolutely don't want that. So once they're nice and cool, the best part about these little mini cheesecakes is this little topping here and you can get creative on these. So what I've done, I've taken some fresh cranberries and a sprig of rosemary. Let me show you how I did this. I think these are neat for the winter time because they kind of look like they're snow covered, right? So you just take a sprig of rosemary and I'm going to dip it in some sugar water. This is just water dissolved with some sugar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in some confectionery sugar or granulated sugar rather, either one. And then just put it on a paper towel like this to dry and do the same thing with the cranberries. You don't have to use cranberries. You can use any kind of fruit, raspberries, blueberries. You can really get creative on this. And I think it just adds such a nice touch. Okay, so you can do these ahead of time. If you wanna do these the day before, that's great. And just let them kind of sit overnight. Um, if you don't have all that time, you can do it an hour before. But these took me no time at all, you see? So they end up just kind of looking like this. So I just garnish them and they're absolutely adorable. You can see all the layers. You can see our cookie crust, you can see our jam, you can see our cream cheese filling and then our really pretty garnish. I like to kind of put a ribbon around this as a hostess gift. And if you save the tops, you can kind of put that right back on and travel with it. It makes a nice gift, a nice addition to any holiday table. I hope you love this recipe as much as I do. Heather McWilliams for Boomer TV, bon appetit. And that's it for another edition of Boomer TV. We were just discussing body language here a moment we ago. We were, like so. open palms, welcome in. Now, yeah. now it's like, Bye, so now we have to wave goodbye, but not because we want to. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be back next Sunday morning, 9 a.m. right here on WFYI. Waiting for you to come back, and hopefully you bring a friend too. Have a great day. <laughs> See you soon. On Get Boomer out of the TV. spotlight now, Sorry, Paul. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. For more all things Boomer, just visit our website. That's indieboomer.com. Indie Boomer connects TV, magazine, and radio. It contains useful information for baby boomers all over the Indianapolis metropolitan area. And you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Pick up Indie Boomer Magazine at most Kroger stores and libraries. Look for us all over Indy. Listen to Boomer Radio every Saturday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. on Freedom 95 with a rebroadcast Sundays at 7.30. Indie Boomer, for the next chapter of your life. Boomer TV is made possible with support from Westport Homes, dedicated to building homes for every chapter of life, with plans and details that match customers' specific needs and style. Additional funding is provided by Altman, Poindexter, and Wyatt attorneys, serving clients throughout central Indiana with wills, trusts, and estates, with over 70 years of combined experience. Unique Home Solutions, serving more than 30,000 homeowners since 1983 providing home remodeling services from minor updates to complete renovations with a mission to improve appearance and efficiency.